When I show this video or talk about Promunda's work in caregiving, or I talk about the issue of men caregiving and fatherhood, there's usually a lot of common reactions. Well, that's touching. Well, isn't that sweet? But with all the huge problems in Brazil and elsewhere in the world, it's not really serious, is it? We think at Promundo, and I think personally, that men's involvement and participation in caregiving is very serious business. <laughs> Oops, wrong slide. That's usually the reaction we get, <laughs> thinking about men doing these things that in our minds look like what we think women usually do. And most of us were cared by women who did most of those things with us and to us. Let me tell you why it's serious business. 1999-2000, I was interviewing young men in low-income areas of Chicago in the U.S. and in favelas in Rio de Janeiro. I was interviewing young men who had participated in gangs or had found ways of getting out of gangs. One young man that I interviewed named Tony, this is not him, but he looks a lot like this guy. Tony was 20 years old. He had spent a year and a half in prison. He had used a weapon against someone in a robbery. He had tattoos on his face that were part of being initiated into the gang. And he was doing the very painful and long-term, it took about three months, laser surgery to have the tattoos removed. He walked, just walking out in the street for him was to be a marked man. The police saw him as a gangbanger forever. His gang that he left said, you're a traitor. And the rival gang saw him as a constant threat. He said employers would barely even talk to him once they saw the tattoo on his face, once they saw on his resume that he had a prison record. And I said, Tony, it was this cold winter night in Chicago, and I said, Tony, how are you going to get out of this life? What are you going to do? Tony was holding his one-year-old daughter in his arms when we did this interview, and he said, it's her, man. For her, I'm never going back to that life. Very similar stories came up with young men in favelas in Rio. A connection to others as caregivers, a child, a mother, an elderly grandparent, was often for many a pathway to organize their lives in different ways. To say, I've got this connection and I'm responsible for somebody else in a way that means I can't go back to that life. This is not just a handful of men. One of the biggest studies we have on gang violence in the U.S followed a thousand men over 45 years from high gang communities in Boston. One of the single strongest factors for which men stayed out of gangs or got out of gangs was being connected to their children. Caregiving is serious business for men. Let me talk about my most serious business. About the same time that I was doing these interviews, which led to us creating Promundo and looking at ways that we built on voices of men who questioned violence, questioned the non-participation of men as caregivers, my daughter was born. I was doing my PhD in child development. We study brain development, how children grow and thrive and how they get ahead, spending lots of hours learning all the stuff. One afternoon, I was leaving a seminar to go do the day a week that I did, I was able to organize to care for her all by myself, I promise. No mommy, no grandmother, no nanny, just me <laughs> caring for her. That was the best child development degree, actually much better than the doctorate. But I told my fellow students, hey, I've got to leave early, sorry, I'll see you. And they went, oh, you're going to babysit. And I said, hold on a second here. Fathers don't babysit. We are caregivers. And they looked at me as if I were speaking a foreign language. So, <laughs> wait a minute. We teach this stuff, we study it, and we don't take it seriously as an activity that men and women should do every day. And that is one of the biggest challenges around caregiving. We don't take it seriously when women do it, <laughs> and we don't take it very seriously when men do it. 
I'm going to tell you why it matters. It matters in your lives as women. It matters in your lives as men. It matters for children. And it matters for the planet. It matters for the issue of violence against women. You've seen these numbers from a previous speaker. We know that a third of the world's women will experience or have experienced physical violence from a male partner. We've never made so much noise about this issue than this year during the 16 days of activism. It is on the global agenda. We're marching in many parts of the world, and yet we don't have evidence that we're having any impact on it. In fact, there's very little evidence that we've been able to bring it down in spite of the laws, in spite of all that we're trying to do. The interesting thing to think about is we know which men are more likely to use violence. Men who watched it growing up, if they saw a man or their father or another man use violence against their mother growing up, they are twice as likely to use it. Also, men who have rigid notions of what it means to be men, men who think they're entitled to sex or more likely to use rape, men who experience other forms of violence, including corporal punishment, are more likely to use other forms of violence growing up. And which men are more likely not to use violence? Men and women who had fathers like this. The protective factor for violence is having a father who was involved in your daily care work, who showed and modeled respect in his relationship with, your, with his mother, and who never used violence against your mother. It's time that we put that and make that serious, a serious part of our prevention efforts. Anybody take a guess as to where this picture is from? The one country in the world where we've measured a change, a reduction of violence against women. Give you a clue, it's a cold country close to the Arctic Circle, about five million people. Norway? Okay. The one country in the world that we've seen a decline in violence against women is Norway. Mid-80s, they started one of the biggest and boldest experiments in gender equality ever, a year of family leave, quotas to get women in the workplace, full package of gender equality things. They looked 20 years later what's going on. They got men to take, on average, two months of paternity leave. They got men's participation in care work almost equal to women. They, they did the same study 20 years later and measured what happened. In households where men did equal amounts of work, the care work, the daily work, the domestic work, family violence declined by a third. That is violence against children and violence against women. Time for us to think about how men's caregiving can be part of our violence prevention solution. Women's equality. You know all the advancements that we've seen in these last years, women's participation in the workplace, in school, declines in maternal mortality, the list goes on, the number of women in politics, still far less than it should be, but happening in amazing ways. And yet, who does the care work? Men? Uh, no. We forgot to send that memo to men <laughs> of doing more care work. In the Global South, women do two to ten times the amount of work that men do. Spain's gotten a little better. Men here are doing about 30% of the care work. Women, you could do some nudging next to the men if you want to. Sorry to out you guys like that, but it's necessary now and then. Okay, that's causing the men a little pain. Now I want to get to the pleasure part. Yeah. All right. <laughs> One of, we did a study over the last three years, 20,000 interviews. It's called the International Men and Gender Equality Survey, images. 20,000 interviews, women and men across 10 countries. Ask women and men all kinds of things about their lives together. We asked women how much their partner participated in housework, care work, dividing the, the work at home. Where men did greater amounts of care work, not surprisingly, women were happier. Not surprisingly, women said they were sexually happier. This part's important, sexually happier with him, with the partner. <laughs> not the delivery man, not the neighbor, but with him. So I'm guessing most of you here have probably figured that out in your relationships. If you haven't, let me show you a very important finding from our study. Ryan Gosling, I think you can read the top up there. It says, make yourself comfortable while I pick up a pack of extra absorbent diapers. <laughs> so our study finds, guys, that women think we look like Ryan Gosling when we do the care work. Okay? <laughs> <Yeah? laughs> 
Ryan was looking a little thin, so I superimposed his head on my body in that picture. But anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that later. Last thing to think about is, apart from sex, caregiving is good for men in all kinds of other ways. Previous speakers have talked about how bad men are in terms of caring for their own health. We die five years earlier on average in Europe. We're less likely to seek health services. We drink twice as much. We simply don't take care of ourselves. Study after study, however, has shown us that if men do care work, they're also more likely to care for their own body. By caring for others, we learn how to care for our own bodies. And I think we got a chance of using that as a way to get men to be better caregivers for themselves and for others. Move toward our last point here, and then I'll close. The print up here is small, you probably can't read it, because how many of you stay up late at night reading UN documents? Yeah, <laughs> love it, okay. This is part of, we're at an interesting moment in the planet at the moment with the end of the Millennium Development Goals and the new ones that are coming up. It's a mission statement for the planet that we're looking at how do we make the world better, less poor, more equal. I don't think we can do that unless we include caregiving. Unless we separate out this notion that women do less paid, less important work, and we call that care work, and men do the so-called real stuff that's out in the world. When we do that, we create men who are careless about their own bodies, they're careless about others, they may often put profits and production over people, and they don't lose, they lose the ability to connect to others in deeper, more meaningful ways. So the point to take home is caregiving is serious. It's neither male nor female, it is simply what makes us human. Thanks very much.